In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a couple theorems. Uh, the first theorem that we're going to look at is something called Rolle's theorem. All right. So in order for us to use Rolle's theorem, there's a few conditions that need to be met. So first, we need to let uh, f to be continuous on some closed interval and differentiable on the open interval from a to b. So it needs to be continuous and differentiable. Um, also, we need the value of our function at a and b to be equal. So we need f of a to equal f of b. So if those three things are true, then that tells us there's at least one number c on the open interval from a to b such that f prime of c is equal to zero. So the derivative at uh, c will equal zero as long as the function is continuous and differentiable. And if the endpoints of our interval, um, the value of our endpoints at the interval are the same. So we can kind of look at something that we see here, right? So this curve, we can see uh, f of a here and f of b here have the same value of d. So because our function is continuous, if it starts and ends here, that means that somewhere in the middle, right? So it's going to be a continuous curve. So it could go up, it could go down, right? Maybe we have some squiggly like this. Um, but somewhere in between this interval, there's going to be somewhere where the function has a horizontal tangent. Um, given that our function is continuous and differentiable. So because it's differentiable, that means it's smooth uh, and continuous. So you can see that we have a horizontal tangent here, which tells us that the derivative of our function at that value c is zero. Now, in this situation, again, f of a and f of b are equal. However, at c, at c, our function is not differentiable. So f is not differentiable here. And because f is not differentiable here, mm -hmm. Rolle's theorem does not apply. We cannot apply Rolle's theorem here because our function is not differentiable at x equals c. So in order for this to work, it has to not only be continuous, it also has to be differentiable. This is a continuous function. It's just not differentiable because we have that sharp point, that cusp there. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply Rolle's theorem and take a look at this example. Uh, well, before we can figure out if we can apply Rolle's theorem, first, our function needs to be continuous and differentiable. Um, it's a polynomial function, so I know it's continuous everywhere. Uh, all polynomial functions are also differentiable everywhere, so this is good on that front. Uh, we need to figure out what is f of... So we have this interval here from negative 3 to 3, so we want to know what is f of negative 3 and what is f of 3. Uh, so f of negative 3 is what? f of 3 is what? To see if we can apply Rolle's theorem. So if you go ahead and plug that into your calculator, uh, what are we going to get? So x to the fourth minus 8x squared plus 7. Um, and if we evaluate this at negative 3, we're going to get 16. And if we evaluate it at positive 3, we also get 16. So because the values at the endpoints are equal, uh, we can apply Rolle's theorem. So f is continuous, right? f is uh, continuous and differentiable everywhere, right? Everywhere. So that means that um, on the interval from negative 3 to 3, it will also be continuous and differentiable. OK. So if we're going to apply Rolle's theorem, that means we need to look at the derivative of this. So what is f? prime of x. So f prime of x is going to be 4x to the third minus 16x. Um, we can factor out a 4x from this. So we're going to get 4x times x squared minus 4, uh, which can factor to be 4x times x minus 2 times x plus 2. Uh, so that's it all the way factored. And we want to know where is this equal to 0. So where is f prime of x equal to 0? That's going to happen when I set each of my factors equal to 0. So when x minus 2 equals 0 and when x plus 2 equals 0. Solve all of these, we get that x equals 0, x equals 2, and x equals negative 2. Now, the question is, are all of these valid answers? Are all of these valid answers? So the values of c 
and actually if we're talking about c it should be uh, c equals zero c equals two c equals negative two but the values of c must exist on the interval from negative three to three and all of these are in that interval so we can say that c would be equal to negative two zero and two so those would be all of the possible values of c for which the derivative is equal to zero uh, so the next uh, theorem that we're going to be looking at is something called the mean value theorem. And this is a pretty important theorem. Uh, it's used fairly frequently. And it's kind of a um, more generalized version of Rolle's theorem. Rolle's theorem is more of like a specific case of the mean value theorem. So the mean value theorem, again, requires us to have a continuous and differentiable function. So continuous on the closed interval from A to B and differentiable on the open interval from A to B. So if it's uh, if that's true, then there exists at least one number C on the interval from A to B such that F prime of C equals F of B minus F of A all divided by B minus A. Now, the real question is, what is this? What is this? I know what this is, F prime of C. This is telling me the slope of my tangent line at point C. But what is F of B minus F of A all over B minus A? Remember, this is just the slope of our secant. This is the slope of the secant. Um, and another name for this is the average rate of change. Right, it's the average rate of change. So this is the difference quotient. Um, it's the slope of the secant. It's the average rate of change that we uh, of our interval from A to B. And you can see that here, right? So here's our secant line. It's intersecting our curve at the endpoints. Uh, here's our tangent line. You can see that those two lines look parallel. And if we're looking at the slope, right? The slope is the rise. So we're going up. So it's the difference from uh, f of b to f of a. And then it's the rise over the run, which is b minus a. So the slope of the secant line is f of b minus f of a all divided by our b minus a, which is exactly what we have here. And we can see that uh, from the diagram that the slope of our secant line or our average rate of change is equal to the slope of our tangent line, which is f prime at c. So this is a pretty interesting result. It tells us that somewhere on the interval from a to b, our tangent line will have the same value as our average rate of change uh, at on the over the that interval, uh, which is pretty interesting, right? But in order for that to happen, our function has to be continuous and differentiable. So let's kind of try and apply this. So we want to show the function y uh, f of x equals x squared satisfies the hypothesis for the mean value theorem on the interval from zero to two. Um, so that would be this here, right? If it's continuous and differentiable, then there's at least one number such that this is true. Okay, so first let's go ahead and graph the function f of x equals x squared. So we have 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4. Uh, we're just looking at it on the interval from 0 to 2. So we have this part of our curve here. Whoops, pretty terrible drawing there. So that part of our curve there. Um, so we're told that the slope of our tangent line somewhere on this curve from zero to two is gonna be equal to the average rate of change. So our average rate of change uh, is just the slope that goes from here to here, right? The line from there to there. Uh, so let's kinda, of... so here we have our secant line. And so we need to show that somewhere, let me just, uh, Somewhere on here, the slope of our tangent line should be the same. So we see that it kind of looks like it should be somewhere around there. Um, but let's kind of show that that is in fact true. So it looks like it's gonna happen at around x equals one, but let's kind of show that that's true. Um, f of x equals x squared is just a parabola. So I know it's continuous. I know it's differentiable on the entire real number line. So let's first find f prime of c. So what is, well, f, what's f prime of x? f prime of x is 2x. So this is going to equal the average rate of change on this interval. 
and then we'll find the value of x that makes that true. So we want 2x to equal uh, f of b, so f of 2 is 4, minus f of a, which is 0, all over 2 minus 0. So we want 2x to equal 4 divided by 2, which is 2, which tells me this happens when x is equal to 1. Uh, so that was kind of right where we were looking at it before. And it had this, uh, this slope here that is the same as our average rate of change. So this tells me that, um, I guess it should say c equals 1. So when c is 1, the slope of our tangent is equal to the average rate of change. You can always check that by plugging it back in. Um, what is f prime of 1? So that's going to be 2 times 1, which is 2, uh, which is the same as our average rate of change. OK, so part uh, example 3 says, determine all numbers c which satisfy the conclusions of the mean value theorem. So this is kind of just the same thing. We just want to know where is the slope of the tangent line equal to the average rate of change over this interval. Um, again, we're dealing with a cubic here. So this cubic is going to be differentiable. And it's continuous everywhere, again, because it's a cubic. So let's go ahead and find, uh, we want to show where f prime of c is equal to f of uh, 2 minus f of negative 1, all divided by 2 minus negative 1. So let's figure out what the average rate of change is first. So plugging in 2, we get 8. Uh, 2 squared is 4, and 2 is 8. So 16 minus 2 is 14. So 14 minus, plugging in negative 1, we get negative 1. We're going to get a positive 2, uh, and then a positive 1. So 3 minus 1 is 2, all divided by 2 plus 1, which is 3. And we want to know where is f prime of c equal to that. Uh, that's 12 minus 3, which is 4. So we want to know where is the derivative equal to 4. So what is f prime of x? f prime of x is going to be 3x squared plus 4x minus 1. Uh, so we can go ahead and try and factor this. Uh, try and factor this. And we will get... Um, well, actually, we want to know where is this equal to 4. So first we'll set it equal to 4. So 3x squared plus 4x minus 1 equals 4. So we're going to uh, subtract 4 over so that we can try and solve this. 3x squared plus 4x minus 5 equals 0. Um, it's actually not factorable. This is not factorable. So, because we're, we're trying to look for a number that multiplies to be negative 15 and adds to 4, and the factors of 15 are 1 and 15, 3 and 5. Um, it would have to be the larger number positive. Neither of these sum to be 4. So, we have to turn to our graphing calculator or the quadratic formula. And if you plug this in your graphing calculator, um, what would we get? So we would get uh, that x is equal to 0 0.786, or x is equal to negative 2.120. Uh, those are going to be the two numbers that you're going to see where uh, the x values make this 0. And we need our value, okay, uh, so we need our value of x to be on the interval from 1 to 2. And so this value here at uh, negative 2.120 does not work because it's not in this interval. So this tells me that c can only equal 0 0.786 because that's in the interval from negative 1 to 2. So that would be our value of c that works. All right. So this last example um, is kind of a more practical application kind of problem. So it says a car is traveling on the highway. It passes mile marker 147. So if you're driving on the freeway, um, a lot of times on the freeways, they have mile markers that tell you 
like what mile marker you're on on the freeway. Generally, they have a different mile marker going north and south or east and west, uh, whichever way the freeway travels. And so this is at mile marker 147, uh, and you're going 60 miles per hour. Five minutes later, the car is passing mile marker 154, so you've gone seven miles uh, in the five minutes, and you're traveling at a speed of 65 miles per hour. We want to show that the car must have exceeded the speed limit of 65 miles per hour at some time during those five minutes. Okay, so let's just do like a quick little sketch here. Um, so 147 and 154, those kind of, those just represent our position, right? They're how far we are on the freeway. So at some time, uh, we don't really know what the time is, but at some time we're at mile marker 147, and then at some other time, five minutes have passed. Right, so it's been five minutes. Uh, we're at mile marker 154. Now, we need to be careful in this, right? Because we're talking about miles per hour, miles per hour. And they were giving us these units in minutes. So we need to talk about this in terms of hours. So five minutes is going to be 1 12th of an hour, right? Five divided by 60 is 1 12th. So this is 1 12th of an hour. So really that's what we need to use. Um, so when we're looking at this, the mean value theorem, so when you're driving, you're going to drive on a continuous path. You're not like skipping any anything here. So we know our function is continuous. It's going to be smooth because you're going to be driving in a smooth, uh, smooth path. So we're going to be able to use the mean value theorem here. Um, and what that says then is that the average rate of change should be equal to the um, derivative. So the slope of your tangent line should be equal to the average rate of change somewhere on this interval. So we want to show, use this somehow to prove that we have exceeded the speed limit. So let's go ahead and look at what the average rate of change is. So we're told that f prime of c is going to equal the average rate of change. So it's your position at the ending point, which is 154, minus your initial position, which is 147, um, all divided by the time elapsed, right? So it'd be 1 12th minus 0, which is 1 12th. Uh, we said that this was 7, so this is 7 divided by 1 12th. 7 divided by 1 12th is the same as 7 times 12, which is 84. So this is saying that somewhere our derivative has to equal the average rate of change. But our average rate of change is 84 miles per hour, right? The average rate of change is 84 miles per hour. And this tells us then that somewhere f prime of c, right, for some f prime of c, also has to equal 84 miles per hour. If this curve, if uh, is, or this isn't that, that's the average rate of change, but if uh, our curve is our position function, we know that the derivative of the position function is the velocity function. So the velocity, right, your velocity was 84 miles per hour at some point. And so 84 miles per hour clearly is greater than 65. So therefore, we have exceeded the speed limit. So your curve probably looks something like this. Um, you probably were driving nice and safe at this point going 60 miles per hour. And then here you're going 65 but you might have sped up some and then done something like this and slowed down. So you would then have your uh, tangent line like something like this where it would be parallel somewhere around here like that. So somewhere at this value of C, we've reached the average rate of change, or sorry, we are equaling the average rate of change, which is 84 miles per hour.